We got the literal smallest team in the league making headwinds in the standings, the Wheat Kings and the Ice are finally allowed to come home and play some hockey after a brief pause from COVID, and the Portland Winterhawks have finally been surmounted in regulation this calendar year. That and much more is on the way. I'm Kai Fahrenholtz, and let's see who I'll jinx this week in WHL Weekly. Flying left wing side, Gunther Hill walk. Get rich on the Now he's got the hat trick. Dylan Gunther. Hometown kid flying down that left wing. Who can stop that? But Bedard cuts to his right, chokes and scores. Connor Bedard breaks the deadlock 22 seconds into the second period. I really think I should keep my mouth zipped when it comes to bantering over streaks that teams are currently on because literally every one of those streaks I mentioned last week ended in horrific fashion. Every single one. Like this one has to be the most shocking though. The Portland Winterhawks lost their 18 game point streak in a 3-2 regulation loss to the Spokane Chiefs of all things. Moose Jaw saw their 8 game streak drift away in a 2-1 battle versus Lethbridge. The Silver Tips will continue their point streak but Kelowna nipped them in a 4-3 shootout win and the Blazers got into penalty trouble which led them to a 4-3 loss to the hungry Tri-City Americans who have actually been gelling quite well lately. Like this has been a team that's been struggling to find the back of the net for the last few seasons due to a load of factors but a Lack of chemistry has always been the backbreaker whenever I tuned in. During their weekday affair with Kamloops though, this team simply looked more like an actual team, like the veteran core of Connor Bouchard, Samuel Huo, and Sasha Mutala was leading by example. They combined for 13 total points this week and were key contributors to the victory over the Blazers, alongside Czech import Peter Moravec, who was a absolute threat on the power play. His two goals were the difference maker in their lone victory this week. And when you start to see the likes of Lukas Dragasevich, Jake Slaw, and Parker Bell filling their roles, it allows those vets to catch their breath at the end of every shift. Just wait until Jordan Gavin makes the jump to playing full time for these guys next season. He was great in a short stint a little back, but the CSSHL has to put a lid on this kid. If you're looking for some 2025 eligibles to get excited for, Gavin is a very hot contender. Let's take a closer look at the Winterhawk situation though, but before we get into the loss, we have to mention that Gauthier has already set a new franchise record in Portland. The guy has played 10 games here and he's already giving fans a reason to praise him like a god and put his number in the rafters. He is the GOAT after all. Gauthier's shutout streak lasted an immense 251 minutes and 11 seconds. That's nearly four and a half hours without a goal squeaking by. And when you look at the one that breached the goal line. Circle, fire shot, rebound out front, and a score! It's, it's one you really want him to have back. It, it's a sad one. They'd win that game 8-1, to one, but hats off to Cooper Michaeluk on the Chiefs. I know this was supposed to be Berkeley Catton's week, but wow. He was only supposed to serve as the backup while Mason Bopit sits out for a little bit with a minor injury, but he just stunted the current superpower of the WHL, making 36 of 38 stops in a 3-2 victory. McCulloch was a sixth rounder in 2020. Round of applause for the Sherwood Park native. If we check in on the team that McCulloch probably cheered for growing up, the Edmonton Oil Kings are starting to show more cohesion as time presses on. Justin Sordiff was able to clinch his first three point effort as an Oil King versus the Rebels as he gets comfier with each and every appearance. And Edmonton is currently riding a four game win streak with a big thanks to that powerful top six that they possess. Although I, I, I still don't know if it's enough to combat the goaltender PTSD inducing ice that recently was just given the green light to play again after a COVID hiatus. They're also playing their first games at home in nearly two months due to capacity restrictions and boy were the fans treated to some carnage. Connor McLennan dropped a steaming five goals over two contests including a hat trick versus Brandon and Ben Zalotti. More apples than you can pick from a tree. He's had five in his last two and nine in his last five. That's insane. But now all those acquisitions made at the trade deadline, Chase Wheatcroft, Tanner Brown, and I know he wasn't acquired at the deadline, but Jack Finley, these guys are fitting in like those puzzle pieces you've been scouring the whole house for. 
It's when they have games like this where I don't know if the Oil Kings can really stop them. Like, this team's offensive output is simply too dangerous. In terms of maturity, I still believe the Oil Kings have the edge, but the outright potential and volatility of this team is unpredictable. I still think there's parts to Savoy's game he can unlock, same goes for Geeky, and guys like Lambos and Peterson are going to be massive contributors come playoff time. I can already see their experience shining through. Let's look at some of the guys making a real impact now though. Set your clocks ahead because it's time for the prospect watch. Draw back for Savoy, score! Pickering, quick shot, score! Who's like Jagger? Fergus, another power play goal! Let's start it off with some 2006 born players. 2006, damn it feels weird saying that. But the two guys that made their debuts over the week were 2021 first overall pick, Berkeley Catton, and fourth overall pick, Roger McQueen. Catton saw a larger role on a lesser skilled team and demonstrated his raw potential, but Raj McQueen really caught me off guard. The size and motor he brings to the stage was really noticeable, and he was rewarded with an assist on a faceoff win, securing him his first career point in his WHL debut. As for a 2023 guy that needs more recognition, Andrew Crystal of the Kelowna Rockets has been a beast all season, but he keeps getting more and more comfortable with every passing game. He's a confident, creative stick handler that's finding ways to bury it by any means necessary. His seven points over his last four games, including the game time goal versus Tri-City, is helping him cement himself as a considerable option to be a first round pick in next year's draft. Someone jumping up in my books for 2022 at the moment, though, has to be Fraser Minton. He's playing on a line away from the likes of Kamloops' beefed up forwards, and Minton has been on a consistent pace doing damage at 5-on-5, five five, including scoring the shootout winner in a heated affair with Everett. Then I got Kamloops' born and raised, Matthew Ward, the middle child of three brothers, both of them playing Merritt. Like, I just want to bring him up, not for the recent offensive output, but his defensive awareness. Not often do you see a kid of his size showing much determination and effort around his own zone. It honestly caught me off guard how valuable he was behind his own blue line. Just off of that viewing, I had a lot of my doubts erased, and he's 100% shot up in my rankings again. And capping it off, we got the Belarusian export Igor Sidorov. He's been a vital depth scorer over the last week with Saskatoon, notching a hat-trick over the Pats in a 6-2 victory, allowing the Blades to get ever so closer into the top 10 standings in the WHL. And you can argue about this team's depth all you want, but like you can't deny that their top 6 is one of, if not the most potent core in the league. Sidorov wasn't the only Blade to have a hat trick this week. Kyle Krinkovic snagged his second of the year versus the Hitman, which was also his ninth multi-goal game of the season. He's atop of the league in points as of now, surpassing Archdeep Baines for the crown, snatching six points over the week, leading his club to three important victories. He wouldn't have been able to do it though without the increasingly supportive assistance from guys like Trevor Wong. After a slow start to the year, he's showcased he's more than ready to be given top line minutes in Saskatoon alongside the likes of Krinkovic, Robbins, and Lasowski. Although, uh, it doesn't matter how good your line's doing, because Connor Bedard is simply continuing to tear the league a new one and just show everyone what Connor Bedard is all about. He's a runaway train at this point and I don't think there's anything stopping him. If you didn't think he could outdo last week, Buddy garnered 9 effing points over his last 3 games. But this goal right here, how? He's making it look like the 80s or 90s with these goals, like ode to Stevie Y on that one. What a release. The Pats themselves are playing more cohesive than they were last week, but it's still just been so difficult for them to string together a streak of Ws. Like, they're not far behind the likes of the Hurricanes, Broncos, or Hitmen, which are all teams they'll soon match up against, but this is the time of year where these games become crucial. And I think Regina has what it takes to knock off a couple of these teams if everything's clicking. Like I said last week though, the depth needs to play their role. Bedard can't be scoring 5 points a night every game. As much as we'd like to see it, I'd like to see Pats play off hockey even more so. Time to wrap things up with our top players and teams for the week. And starting it off with the players, we got none other than the guy that we just previously mentioned, Connor Bedard. Like, I don't want to put him here every week, but I simply don't have a choice. Like, 9 points in 3 games. I, I, I can't ignore it. Then we got Wheat King's D-Man Chad Nightchuck on the board for his all-around dominance this week across three contests, six points, and a Gordie Howe hat-trick versus the Broncos. And finally, more of an unsung hero this week, Nolan Meyer. 
quietly going 3-0, making a combined 87 saves on 92 shots to help solidify his blades with the perfect week. As for the teams, Myers Blades will easily snag that top spot with their current three-game win streak, followed by Edmonton and Winnipeg for their current strangleholds on the Eastern Conference, leaving Kelowna as the only team making this list from the West. They broke Everett's win streak and had a terrific comeback versus the Americans. They're 9-1 in their last 10 and sit prettily at 5th in the conference. I'm curious to see what streaks I jinx next week. That absolutely killed me seeing all those teams lose in the middle of the week while I was editing the last video. It was just aggravating, annoying, like any synonym attached to those words. Like I laugh at the end of the day, but geez, I feel responsible. It should be another good week ahead of us though. A bunch of games we lost due to COVID are being rescheduled. American teams are gonna have an easier time crossing the border. It just should be fun. Either way, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next week. See ya.